Here are the only methods of factoring that I use. Guess and check, which is my personal favorite, grouping, which is how I factor more than three terms, and the perfect square or perfect cube. Usually for polynomials with three terms like this, I'll use the guess and check method. Let's first set up the basic structure of our answer. I know that the answer will look something like this with two parentheses, and we can start filling out the terms on the inside. Let's first figure out what we can multiply to get to the first term, 6x squared. To get 6x squared, you can either multiply 6x and 1x, or 3x and 2x. For now, I'm going to guess and choose 3 and 2, but it might not work after we check it, but that's completely fine, it's just part of the method. Next, let's try to figure out what we can multiply to get to the last term, negative 49. You can think about factors, and it's either 49 times negative 1 or 7 times negative 7. Because the middle number is not super high, I don't think anything is being multiplied by 49, so I'm going to guess that it's 7 and negative 7. Now let's do the check part and guess and check. Basically, you're doing a part of foiling to see if your middle term comes out correctly. To get the x term, let's do the outside and multiply 3x times negative 7 and inside, so 7 times 2x. When you add negative 21x and 14x, it equals negative 7x, which is not the positive 7x we're looking for. So we'll have to guess again, then check it until it works out. So now our options are to switch out your factors. Maybe it's supposed to be 6 and 1 instead of 3 and 2. You can also switch up the order, so maybe it's 2 and 3 instead of 3 and 2. And also because of this negative, maybe we need to switch the negative, so it's negative 7 and 7 instead of 7 and negative 7. But just because I've done this problem before, I know you have to switch the 7 and negative 7. When we're checking, we'll get 21x minus 14x, which is indeed 7x, so we have the right factors. The more you do these problems, the more intuitive the guessing part becomes, so it just comes down to doing a bunch of practice problems. When you encounter something with four terms, I usually go for the grouping method. For a first step, let's group the first two terms and see what you can factor out. So basically find the GCF of the first two terms. Here in our example, it looks like we can pull out an x squared. Now let's group the last two terms. What can we pull out here? You can pull out a 2 and get 2 times x plus 3. So now you'll notice that in both of our groupings we ended up with an x plus 3 in both. In the same way, you can actually pull out the x plus 3 as a factor and we'll get x squared plus 2 times x plus 3. That is our answer. There are also very specific cases where your polynomials are perfect squares or perfect cubes. So if you ever see two terms that are perfect squares and they're being subtracted, this is important that they're being subtracted, you can use the difference of squares formula where the factored form is this. So looking at our example, 4x squared is a perfect square because it's 2x squared, and 9 is a perfect square because it's 3 squared. And yes, they're being subtracted, so we can use the difference of squares. In factored form, let's plug it in. It's 2x plus 3 times 2x minus 3. Easy. There are also formulas for perfect cubes, and with the cubes, they work whether you're adding them or subtracting them. To help memorize the cubed formulas, notice that for the sum of cubes, the first sign is positive, and for the difference of cubes, the first sign is negative. Then for the next sign, it flips, and the last sign for both is always positive. Hopefully that helps you memorize the formula. It's probably the easiest thing to slip up on. In our first example, we're adding perfect cubes. We can use this formula and plug in the a and b values, 
and now it's factored. Just to do our last example, you can do the same thing if you're subtracting perfect cubes. Again, you'll just plug in the A and B values, but this time some of the signs are flipped. So you just have to pay attention to which one's positive and which one's negative. And this is the factored form. And yeah, that's it. Thanks everyone for watching this video on factoring polynomials. Be sure to like this video and share it with your friends or teachers if you think it might be useful for them also. See you in the next one.